Uh, good morning, YouTube. Thought I'd take a break, and uh, I saw some new release notes. Um, looks like the Gatai and Padina update is coming out. Um, sounds like it's going to come out with the... Um, um, I'm assuming it's going to come out with the with the main update um, when they bring out bring it out on the 16th um, but I'm not sure uh, might take a look at it uh, might already be done um, <clears throat> anyway this was uh, put out um, there's gonna be a new historical battle um, so I haven't looked to see if it's actually there um, actually let's see I guess we could pull that up real quick historical battle and it is not yet. Oh, no, no, it is. Okay, so the Battle of Paideia, which is King Philip V's defeat at Knossophila, I'm pretty sure I <clears throat> butchered that, of Macedon, under de facto Roman council upon Philip's death at 179 BC. His son, Perseus, inherited the throne, far less eager to submit to Rome's authority. Then his father, then his father, Rome dispatched an army, which under the command of Lucius Aemilius Polus would bring King Pyrrhus to battle near the town of Pydina. Okay, so I think it's safe to say these are <clears throat> these are already done. So apologize for miscommunication there. So you have a new historical battle. Um this is making the release of the first Total War novel in Paper Rack, which also includes a sequence featuring a pivotal battle. Players can now test their generalship in a highly challenging Battle of Pydena historical scenario. The important stride forward on the road to Rome, becoming the dominant regional power. Macedon received a blow it couldn't recover from, but how will you? How will your battle fail? Fair. The scenario has been designed as a demanding test of experienced Total War players. Interesting. Um, new playable faction, the Getai. The Getai are not a single tribe, but a loose confederation settled around the Lower Danube. They differ from the local tribes through their worship of Lebazes, who manifests himself through the lightning and thunder and z Zalmoxis, who represents immortality. The Gatai strongly believe that there's no other gods than their own, yet see themselves as consistently at odds with the heavens, even firing arrows at Geblazes during heavy storms. Perhaps reflecting the natural fury, the Gatai have the best skirmishers of all the barbarian factions favoring Lightning fast hit and run strikes at the enemy combined with heavy hitting flax armed shock army. So, <clears throat> new units for the Gatai are heavy skirmishers. These are elite missile infantry, are deadly combination with well armed and armored, especially when compared to other factions, troops in a similar role. Suited to ambushing and softening the enemy before a charge from supporting units, Gatai skirmishers are unparalleled within their culture. You have heavy archers, elite bowmen, are a staple of many of the Gatai's expeditionary forces, who consider a cloudy sky to be poor omen for battle, unless the course, unless of course it is they who are reigning Gebelzee's fury on the enemy's head in the form of thick clouds of heavy shafts and weighted arrowheads. They also pick up normal, uh, noble swords. Um, basically, while it is the purpose of other units to harass, break, and shock, it is the elite swordsmen who have a grim and determined work of slaughtering their foe. It'll be interesting. You usually have noble swords and other barbarian factions. This will probably be the same. Um, 
Looks like they're coming, getting ready to come out with a DLC for the Pirates of Raiders culture. Uh, this update contains content that will prepare the game for purchasers of the forthcoming DLC, the Pirates Raiders Culture Pack. This includes updates to the game, data, assets, so that non-owners can see DLC units on multiplayer maps. The Raiders Culture Pack is out soon. Please see here for details. Okay, so um, which Pirates and Raiders was out, so it the DLC's out, so they're must going to going to be doing some expanding. They're coming out with some new achievements for the different DLCs. If you own Nomadic Tribes, uh, some of the achievements are going to be We Can't Axe for More, Put On Your Red Light, My Kingdom for a Horse. If you own Caesar and Gaul, you can achieve Bactra to the Future. For owners of Caesar and Gaul, you got Sh Struck a Nervy, That's My Bolii, and Anatolia not to come. For owners of Hannibal at the Gates, Celebrite Victorious, Fast and Lusitani, Tyrannius. If you own the, well it came free with the Gatai and Pedonian updates, Gatai in, Phalanx but no thanks. For owners of Pirates and the Raiders, you will pick up a host of colors, achievement, Thrace by Impact, Megas, Basilius, and Comatoris Eternal. Usability improvements. They've added missing subtitles for Hannibal at the Gates in German, Spanish, and Russian. They've updated the, the localization of the Adrii, the Gatai, the Obsidian Kingdom, and Tilius faction traits in French. Italian, German, Spanish, Czech, Russian, Polish, and Turkish. Some general battle improvements increased, increased length of the flax weapon handle so that units hold it correctly in two hands. General campaign improvements. Political promotions in campaign modes are now dependent on all of their prerequisites, which is age or experience level of the general rather than just whether or not they can be afforded. Rating will cause negative happiness as it, you, as it used to be in patch 12. So they pulled it out and they're putting it back in. If you start having rating, um, your settlements will suffer. A campaign AI improvement was a fix for the campaign AI, sometimes overstating the strength of transport ships. That'll be interesting to see um, on both sides, I guess. Um, maybe it's going to fix the auto-resolve, uh, more or less. I guess we'll see. Um, I wonder if it'll go both ways. So if you attack a settlement that has a navy next to it, um, it will better justify whether you can win a battle or not. Um, and then on the flip side, if it attacks you, uh, same thing. Uh, I do believe that there is not a balance there. Um, that, uh, And I'm sure maybe it plays the other way, that battles that the AI says, oh, yeah, you're going to win it hands down. So you go ahead and auto-resolve it, and you do. Um, but there's a chance maybe you wouldn't have if you'd fought it. Well, most definitely, if you have a superior army and like we saw the battle yesterday uh, with the Lugii, that, uh, or the Lugia, however you say it, um, taking one of their provinces, uh, the computer gave a high success rate to the computer, um, but they were easily and handily defeated uh, in, in their course. So some good stuff's come out. Um, especially with uh, a few days away from the major uh, AI. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Let's take a look at this battle. So we will do 
this battle. I'm going to play it on easy just because I'm not the greatest player in the world. And you can throw it over on legendary if you're uh, of a calling. Following Philip's death in 179 BC, however, his son, Perseus, was less willing to accept Roman control. An ambitious man, King Perseus began to restore Macedon as a regional power. The Romans, concerned that their de facto control over Greece would be eroded, declared war. After campaigning across the country, the two armies finally met near the coastal town of Pydna. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, Romans are... I've got elephants, so I can play that to my favor. However, um, I've got a few more skirmishers than they do. They have a couple of javelin throwers and one unit of archers. Uh, we got some axe throwers. We've got some pike infantry. A lot of pike infantry. Um, no swords. Heavy cavalry. So I am definitely at a disadvantage with the cavalry. So if I can put my elephants, I think, maybe in play um, and invest on some of their uh, cavalry, might make a difference. But uh, I think as we've seen, um, they've been uh, nerfed. I will say that the Roman army has uh, looks like more chevrons, so you're going with a little more experienced army. Might be able to tread through. All right, let's take a look at it. A Roman army under Lucius Aemilius Paulus has been sent into Macedon to confront Perseus. After days of maneuvering, the two armies now face each other near Pydna. The Romans, camped in the hills, send a foraging party too close to the Macedonian line. A skirmish breaks out, and increasing numbers of men from either side are drawn into the fighting. The Romans begin to advance, and King Perseus readies his forces. Roman control of Macedon will be decided today, on the field of battle. All right. Draw swords, men. We must secure these hills for Rome. General! Advance at speed. Elephants at the ready. Riders at bond. Hmm. Orders at the double. Orders. Roma in picture. Now I'll tell you I will probably not fight this battle very well. So We'll see how it goes. General, the enemy are sending their cavalry force at our flank. They seek to overwhelm us. We must act. Pull my general back, change my mind. Okay. I'll bring these elephants. All right. Thracian cavalry. Yeah, there they go. Yeah, I walked into that one. Wonder where their cavalry went to. Came up around the back.
Okay, so this probably wasn't the best idea to bring the little way out of the way out of contention. have wounded our general commander and he can no longer influence the battle the news has already reached the men they are disheartened uh, that sucks come on elephants are gonna be tired I took them way out of the fight too soon out of there. Not going to win that fight. Not going to win that fight. Get in that back of that line. See what the elephants do here. Pikes up. All right, well, it's fair to say that guys are not doing well. Yeah. Tough battle here. are out of ammo. Just throw them against the pikes. Nobody comes home. My elephants are routing. I put those pikes down in time. See if I can get these guys to stop shooting. <clears throat> yeah, they're getting 
getting sandwiched. Yeah, this battle is over. That's it. The enemy phalanx is too strong. Regroup in the valley, men. We can cut our way to the coast and sail away from this place. Not good. Not good at all. Well, that was uneasy. And it did not fare well. Not fare well at all. We uh, decimated some of their horses. We decimated some of their archers. Um, so we took care of their general, but we really didn't do much against the pikes. Really did not do much at all. And he still had a lot of horses left. Uh, still a lot of cavalry he didn't even use. So, good fight. All right, well, that's a preview of at least the new battle. Like I said, it didn't go very well for me. Duh, you saw it. Um, so, something to work on, something to get better at. And see you on the other side.